Good morning, good morning everybody. Welcome, this is Maggie Rose Cunningham bringing you Middle Earth readings. Today is Monday the 21st of November. I wasn't here last week, so the previous Middle Earth readings two weeks ago covered the two week period subsequent. I have been away, I have come back, I have caught a cold while I have been away, but I'm recovering nicely. And well, our uh, planetary movements for the week ahead are telling me everything that I need to know about what I need to do in order to recover. Um, if you are here with me live, please do give me a little bit of a wave and share in the chat box your room for the week so that we can have some lovely personal readings for you. Before I talk about the um, the runes moving through the planetary wheel this week, and we've also got um, we're changing halls as well this week as well. I wanted to share with you a little bit of an opportunity because I am aware that as the, certainly in the Northern Hemisphere, as the winter starts to draw in and through this week, winter has definitely been raising his or her head, however you however you connect with the winter season. And, and often we can start to think, oh, I'd quite like to have something to look forward to, you know, something that will make me go, yeah, I can be in this place of, of rest and stillness and calm and slowing down, but, but I know that there's something coming. And if you are here, it means that you're interested in runic astrology and, and the birth runes. So there are three lovely ways that you can deepen your practice through 2023 that I am going to share with you now. And if you are interested in any of them, you can go to www.maginrose.com. And if you look on the homepage, there is a section called um, birth runes and runic astrology. And, and you can find these packages that I'm going to talk about there. So for those of you who are quite new to runic astrology and you're thinking actually, I'd like a little bit more information about how this all works. I'd like to be able to see the planetary movements as they come up through the, the year ahead. And if you would be interested in joining me for a lovely opening ceremony to 2023, taking place on January the 2nd, then I would invite you to join Sooner's Star Wheel for 2023. Sooner's Star Wheel is my membership where you receive an email at the beginning of every month that takes you through all of the planetary movements. You have lovely, some other resources as well in your membership area. You can do your, you can calculate your birth runes yourself. I've got a self-calculation kit in there. We've got some lovely workbooks about um, the planets, about the moon. So it's a great way to start to expand your awareness of runic astrology and to use Middle Earth readings as well to say, okay, you know, I'll pop along to Middle Earth readings and I can see what's happening for the week, but I can see what's happening for the month ahead as well. Um, it's there for you. So that is called Sooner's Star Wheel. And for those of you who are already members of Sooner's Star Wheel, because you can jo join Sooner's Star Wheel at any time and it will take you through for a full 12 months. But the beginning of the year is a really nice time to do it. So if you already, if you're already a member of Sooner's Star Wheel, you will also have access to that um, ceremony on the 2nd of January. It will be recorded as well, so it'll be there in your members area. Um, but that, it will be available to um, everybody who has a membership of Sooner Star Wheel and anybody who signs up, as long as you sign up before the 2nd of January, otherwise you will miss the event. So that is there for you if you're thinking, yeah, runic astrology, I would like to know more. I'd like to dip my toes into the waters of weird. Um, if you are interested in your birth runes, your personal birth runes, in gaining access to, I always think of this as being your personal life oracle, the energies of those runes that were there and they were present, they were singing their song at the moment of your birth and they hold you in your heroic destiny and they provide an, an oracle that you can go back to again and again and again and you can work um, with them over the course of your lifetime then you will want to access the uh, My Birth Runes and Oracle package, which gives you your birth runes report. It's about 24 pages of information about your birth runes. All of the different calculations are done for you and they are quite complicated. We have to do them manually. There's no kind of technical system. So you get that. You get your Sun Rune Awakening package. So for those of you who have done Awakening, you will know what this means. But for those of you who haven't, it is a 
um, a module that is part of my awakening program it gives you your power song for your sun rune it gives you stories for your sun rune it tells you all about your sun rune it gives you meditations to work with for your sun rune it's a really lovely gift to yourself to get to know your sun rune and you get a one-to-one -one, um, deep dive session with me about your birth runes, how you can work with them. Sometimes we work on reading through, looking at all of them and understanding them and which ones are present for you, which ones you could work with. Sometimes uh, there is a personal meditation involved as well. It's very much about what do you need right now from your birth runes. So it's a, a, a deep dive into what do your birth runes want to tell you right now and how you can you connect with them. So again, that's available on the website, your birth runes oracle package. And if you're thinking all of those things sound amazing and brilliant, but I want to go really go for it. You know, I want to be working every every day, every week, every month with my birth runes and with runic astrology. I want to you know, know everything that Maggie has to offer me at this point in her. Ooh, how many year journey is it now? It's going to be coming up for 13 years. Um, journey with the birth runes. You don't just want to know what your birth runes are and have that little dive into your sun rune. You want to be working with the planets. Then my recommendation for you would be to work through birth runes soul journey, which is an online self-study program. You get all of what I've just discussed. You get your Sooners Star Wheel package. You get your birth runes report. You get your one-to-one -one session with me. You get your Sun Rune Awakening package. And then on top of that, you get a, um, a self-study program, which takes you through um, journeys and meditations into each of your planets, a very deep dive meditations into the planets, into your first thread, into your sun rune, your lunar rune, um, your north node, your south node. So you have um, online taught modules taught by me about each of them and um, meditations to then go and access that power for yourself for each of them. And we then meet and we have a group coaching session, which I lead again once a month so that you can bring your questions and we work through those together and we take a focus area and we look each you know each session we look at a little focus area and if you are joining birth rune soul journey either now or before january before the first of january i will be doing a deep dive session as well into each of the uh, planets through january february to add into that resource pack as well so toe dipping personal birth runes or birth rune soul journey for your deepest dive possible into the birth runes and runic astrology are there and available for you right now i will put the link into the chat box but you can also email talk at maganrose.com if you're thinking i'm not sure what's what's for me what's available or please send me a link anything like that send that on so those are available for you and i'm really excited to be working with you in whatever capacity feels right to you through the course of 2023 and I'm very looking much looking forward to our opening session it's going to be a, a workshop about runic astrology and a ceremony of opening for 2023 for all of you um, on Sooner Starwell or Birth Runes Soul Journey new members uh, let me see so where are we with our planetary movements so we have we are moving into Ul's Hall um, all is a hunter god he's a winter god as you would expect at this time of year in the northern hemisphere we're moving into his house we'll be with him from the 22nd of november until the 21st of december so right up until the winter solstice now he is um he's a really important deity he's one that i work with a lot he probably in, at least in some areas of the germanic countries had more prominence than we see within the legends now. It is said that through the winter months, um, he would take Odin's throne through those winter months. You know what Odin was doing, we don't know. Uh, but but he would be there, so he would become you know a sovereign deity in that sense. And there's a little bit of the, perhaps you might think, Oak King, Holly King going on there. And one of the ways in which I find him really useful to work with is for a lot of people who come to me and we work one to one really struggle with the concepts of, um, let's say, war, aggression, conflict um, and finding that space where we can say, I want to stand in my power. 
I want to be centered. I want to take a stand for what I believe in, but I am totally anti-violence. Um, I am anti that a, a, aggressive conflict that one person wins and another one must lose. That 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 doesn't work for for them. And what what I do is um, we often work on the archetype of of the hunter more than the warrior of the bow drawn back and the arrow waiting to work with precision the word war means sort of um chaos and disorder and disruption and that it has the, the the tapestry fraying and falling apart within it and that can be really difficult for us because you know that's often not what we want and some of you remember that we had some really interesting discussions about this when I did my blog articles I did a series of blog articles about power and what it means to have power with rather than power over and all invites us back into the sense of the hunter as in partnership with and honoring and respecting the prey there is still obviously a, a bringing of, of death there is a sacrifice within that but it is in a, a sense in which perhaps we have lost with our relationship with nature at this point and so when I'm, I'm going to be talking about hmm, am I going to be talking about well no we're in a, we're in a point of stillness at the moment but if you are somebody for whom the archetype of the warrior is difficult to access and you feel like that's not part of what I want to be, it's not part of the, the paradigm or the culture that I want to be part of, then the hunter can be a really helpful um, initiator and so all can be really helpful to work with. And he has this still energy as well, as I, as I was saying, that sort of tracking through the forest, that silence, the body moving in silence and quietness, blending with nature and then the poise and the arrow going, which is very, very in keeping with the other energies that we're going to be um, experiencing as well. And we are at this point transitioning into the time of Issa. We have, we've worked through Hargalaz. We are in um, Northes at the moment, the, the need fire that burns through winter and calls to what we, what we require. And we're going to be moving into Issa, the rune of ice. So this is North is here, rune of the need fire, the rune of necessity, the rune of desire. And we spent a little bit of time on North is last um, in our last session. And this is Issa, um, the capital letter, you know, I, you can see within that very much this idea of um, the, the ego or the self sits within the concept of Issa and the ice as well. And we have um, Frigg's Chariot is moving into Isa tomorrow and it's going to stay there until the 4th of December. And Frigg is really inviting us into that moment. So what she's saying, when we're not present in the moment, we can miss that profound transformation or that moment of bliss or that deep knowing that because we're rushing through life so she's saying slow down pause she's saying come to rest and come to stillness and in that single moment of beauty find transcendence find transformation so she's pointing out to us the importance of these periods of times when we need to slow down is partially about opening to integration from all that's come before from the busyness of what's come before and saying you know I'm going to breathe in and let that actually move through me and go where it needs to go. Emotions that we're feeling, I'm going to breathe that in and then let it move through me and go where it needs to go. To feel deeply and to release. All of these things are possible within this time of Issa. It isn't a, unless we're looking at it in um, negative form, if it was like on its side like this, and we are looking at the more challenging aspects of Issa, but at the moment we're looking at the positive. It's not a still, rigid, um, constricted energy. It is still in the sense of awareness, the awareness of presence, the ability to be totally and utterly in the present moment comes through with Issa. And on the 22nd, 
Odin's chariot is also moving into Issa. So Frigg's chariot and Odin's chariot are in perfect alignment at this time. And I always really enjoy that time when the masculine and the feminine powers of sovereignty are together, moving together. So they will both move into this space of, of Issa. And Odin as well is talking about, he's saying there are times when we're talking about like passion and power, you know, those are the things. And Odin so, he so embodies those qualities. But he also says to us, sometimes patience and presence are more potent. They're more potent for us. So allow yourself to feel that space as well. And it isn't, um, Odin isn't in retrograde at the moment. So there is still a form of deep, I'm not going to say power because that's confusing, but a deep potency to this energy when we allow ourselves to rest and fully feel and fully be in the moment. Um, in the work that I was doing last week, that invitation came so many times. It was a deeply transformational event that I was um, crewing on, that I was supporting. And there were times when you know, I could see the participants moving through stuff, deep stuff for themselves that was going and coming out the other side of it. I mean, I was absolutely in awe of their courage, their fortitude, the love that they were giving to each other, the way in which they allowed themselves to go in there and they supported the crew to carry them. But there were also times as a crew member when I was like, you know, I've got to breathe into that. That feels really big for me. What's in there for me? And I would need to go and deal with my own stuff and then come back into the space. And, and that's what Issa offers us. It says, you don't always need to be doing in order to be evolving and transforming and stepping into the next flowering of your soul journey. What's possible for you when you are actually in the present moment? So Odin and Frigg are both offering us that. And at this time, um, Thor's chariot, I should also say, is, is also moving out of retrograde. So it's a nice releasing of that energy. So although Issa is inviting us into stillness, it, there's an unlocking taking place through this time as well, an easing, <sighs> a, maybe that's why I felt really prompted to talk to you about 2023 and what's, um, what's coming for 2023, because Thor's chariot, when it's in retrograde, offers us a period of, um, of, of rest and celebration and harvesting is, is very present there. And when it moves back into the doing mode, there is a transition period. It does. It's not like I'm out because the runes are sounds. So the planet is moving and its sound is changing. You know, it's having a key shift, you might say, at this point. So there's this oscillating backwards and forwards that you might experience. You might already have been experiencing, but will continue through the um, coming week as Thor's chariot moves from that period of rest and receiving and plenty into a, and what's next? So it's saying we don't have to move ahead straight away, but this is a like a hinge point, a hinge point where we are, what else do you need to harvest? And what is this time offering you for the, for your future? So you might get a sense of what's coming. There might be um, planning, there might be sowing the seeds or at least looking at them, you know, in your little seed packet and saying, yes, I think these will be the ones. Taking decisions but not acting on them is the important piece here. And then on the 23rd, which is our final planetary movement for this week, the moon, new moon, will be in Northis. Um, so for those of you who, who might be new to um, runic astrology, the moon moves through um, the runes about once a day moves into a into a different rune space so what i do is i look at the the key points the, the the most powerful phases of the moon particularly the full and and the new and that's what we work with and what i share so i look at which which rune is the moon in at its new phase so it will be in north is so this energy of something new coming really encourages us into saying okay what is it that I actually need? What is it that I actually need? And you could think about that for the coming month because it's a new moon, but you could also start to think about it for the coming year. And start to build that picture for yourself, almost like the foundations of 2023, that upon which you are going to build your 2023 
palace of gorgeousness of whatever it is whatever purpose you want to bring into the world whatever desires you want to fulfill what is it that you need in order to do that um i went on a planning retreat before i went on the um on the training certification last week and one of the most powerful things that um sarah price who is my um trainer mentor uh, she she runs the the group um she's sarah price actually if you ever want to look her up, her up that is the name of her company actually and she always starts by saying what are the things that you want that are going to underpin everything else in terms of the life that you want to have what holidays do you want to put in um what activities do you want to put in for yourself that nourish you and replenish you and put them in your 2023 diary first don't be like, oh, I need to do this, 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 and then try and fit yourself in around all of the other stuff. Start with you, because you are the foundation of everything that you will achieve through the coming year. And for me, that's really what this um, new moon energy is about, and the ESA energies that we're in offer that opportunity as well. So let us make way. I'm a little bit out of balance here. Let me get a bit of balance going on. I'm rocking backwards and forwards. Let me just ground myself a little bit while I have a look at the runes that everybody has shared. Hello, everyone. Oh, I can see lots and lots of comments and hello. Michelle, let's start with you. So we have Lagus for Michelle. Now, Lagus is the rune of water and it can feel as if it's in conflict with Issa, because Issa is obviously frozen, water, the ice, and Lagus wants to flow, wants to um, bring that fertility and newness and possibility um, into the world. When I see your Lagus rune, Michelle, and I feel into it, I'm seeing the ice almost over the top, like a bridge, and then the water underneath. And there's a sense to me almost of, this recognition that I'm going to get all of my facts wrong now, but this is what I'm seeing. Somebody who knows more about the flow of the climate and icebergs and things can tell me more um, about this. So what I'm seeing is the sense in which our world has places where we have ice across the ocean and ice actually acts as an insulator often. And I'm seeing the warmer currents underneath where everything is, is still flowing and um, where life is abounding. But then you have these colder currents above and you know, this whole ecosystem of water, let's say, on our planet, of frozen water, of um, warmer currents, of fresh water, of salt water, all of these things are working together. So Michelle, for you, what I'm seeing is this sense of recognizing that Issa, the ice is there to protect. It is a, a, a an insulating layer. So when you say to yourself, okay, I want to claim that Issa space in whatever way that feels right to you. For some, it's some, you know, sitting in bed and doing the meditation. I am, I am, I am. You can find out more on my YouTube channel or on the, look on the, up, up the Issa room on the website if you're interested in, in that that it provides the the safety for that Lagu's energy, that um, fertile, warm waters to do their thing, for those new ideas and emerging creative processes to to take place and it's that recognition that they that they can work in partnership that Issa and Lagus can work in partnership what we want is that sense of if I honor the Issa side then I will have more space for my Lagus side rather than going oh no no I don't want this stillness I want to keep going and that's when the the, the Lagus and the Issa um clash you now and that the Lagus resents the Issa energy and the Issa energy um feels threatened by the Lagu's energy. They need both. You need those moments of deep rest. And that will access, for you, I feel as if it's more the space of dream. If you don't do it already, look at doing some morning pages, some journaling in the mornings to bring those ideas that are coming from the subconscious mind through. 
And that's what the quiet times, what the quiet spaces allow us, is that time to connect in with ourselves, to connect in with our own Largus flow, and not the Largus flow that's around us. Purest form of Largus, the Largus flow that comes from within and is yours, um, is what I'm feeling there. Chen, you've got Northers, so you're tucking into our sun in Northers and our new moon coming up in Northers as well. Apologies that my voice sounds really awful. I'm going to go and get some honey and lemon after this, I think. Um, I'm feeling fine, by the way, in case anyone's worried. Um, so you are going to be wanting to tap, tap into this new moon energy, Chen. Again, North East and Issa, they are right next to each other in the rune row. The North is, is the need fire burning. Uh, we've had the storm, then we have the need fire, and then we have that stillness. And to me, it's that sense in which it's recognising that when we seek to fill our, fulfil our desires, and I've talked about this before, so I'm going to try not to go into too much depth. When we look to fill up, fulfil our desires, we are looking for instantaneous gratification. That, that feeling in the moment of, you know, I'm feeling a bit tired right now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and have a chocolate bar. You know, and I know that this is something that I do. If I get tired during the day and I can't go and have a sleep, see I'm yawning now just thinking about it, um, I go and have some sugar, and that will keep me going. But that's not meeting my needs. If I was able to meet my needs, and to be honest with you, you know, and to be absolutely clear, I do often, on a Monday, have a sleep after Middle Earth readings, because it's quite a full-on task to do all these readings for you. So if I can, I schedule in lying down and having a sleep after Middle Earth readings. If it's not possible, then I might have a little bit of sugar. But the point is the distinction is recognising that... The desires are like um, icing that we're putting on top of a cake. And if the cake isn't properly baked, it's going to sink in the centre and the icing is going to go you know, down. What we actually need to do is to cook the cake properly. I don't know why I've chosen a cake metaphor for this, but I hope it's working for you. <laughs> it's the desires are on the surface level and they can last us for a, a short period of time. They can make everything seem OK, but they don't meet our needs. And sometimes it will take a while for the things that we do that are meeting our own needs to provide the results that, w that we're requiring. So, you know, with, with sleeping, I talk to people about, um, if I'm doing coaching work with people and we're looking at um, rest and replenishment, one of the most um, powerful things that we can ever do is to turn off our alarm clocks and go to sleep for as long as we need to and actually find out how much sleep our bodies need. For some people, they're just, oh, I can't possibly ever do that because I would just sleep forever. And that's a thing, you know, it's a thing of saying, actually, yeah, if I, if I actually want to find out what my needs are, I have to commit to that. And that might disrupt some of the requirements that life places upon me at this point. So it's a balancing of saying, OK, but if I'm doing that, then I have to recognise that my needs aren't being met. And I am more likely to grab the sugar snack bar, whatever it is, to keep my energy levels up. And tending to our needs takes time and commitment and we don't always see the results straight away and I think Chen that this is not necessarily a you know you're not tending to your your needs thing I think it's more a an awareness that's being offered here for you of looking at the world in that way and recognizing that we are all doing this all of the time it might be that bringing your awareness to the immediate people around you and going oh you know are we if, we are, if you're in a room full of people who none of whom are having their needs met, tempers are going to fray, people are going to feel tired, there's going to be a lack of energy in general. And the best that we can do is to, is to meet our own needs and to you know, role model that what that might be like in the moment and to recognise that just because nobody else is doing it doesn't mean that I have to choose that way as well. Just because our society says power through have some lucasade well i'm a child of the 80s that's what's happening then at least no we don't have to do that so it's those distinctions i think that north is really calling you chen into that sense of yeah trusting your own wisdom around this and developing that trusting that in a wise woman um even when society is saying we can be on the you know we can just recharge really really quickly and it'll be fine it's not fine in the long run. Erica, you've got Feyu, which is also a rune that where I'm feeling this um, energy. And again, a rune that contrasts with the with the energy of Issa. 
we find our lovely Feyrun while I'm feeling into the energy there. So I'm seeing some lovely glints of gold in the snow. It's reminding me of um, the story of Ragnarok. So in the story of Ragnarok, the um, final battle between the gods and you know, the giants and the dead and the forces of chaos or Loki, the forces of fire, the realm of fire, all of these different um, hugely powerful um, deities and beings come together in this final battle and many of them are slain on both sides. And then some re-emerge. Um, Balder, the god who um, Odin and Frigg's son who died, will rise from the realm of death and take his place amongst the gods amongst more. Thor's sons will be there, some of um, Odin's other sons will be there and we're told that as they walk across the fields they find golden gaming pieces in the in, in the grass but I'm seeing these golden gaming pieces as being in the snow when um, when, when I'm seeing yours Erica here we go here's our Feyu rune there is a sense of delight that is coming to me here which is um I'm almost saying, which is deeply ironic, given I've just been talking to Chen about um, not always holding on to your desires, but I'm seeing like one of those um, uh, like sweet shops or toy shops with the little panes of glass that have been made. So they've got the the circles in them. They're like the hand blown planes, panes of glass and it's all painted in red and green and there's candy canes and there's music and there's sing. It's really, you're really bringing the festive season out in me here, Erica, with your Feyu rune. And it's that sense of um, cherishing those moments, that tingling sensation, which um, for those of us, I was brought up Christian, so Christmas, Christmas Day is an important family day for me and I still get excitement from it, but Yule is the the sacred day for me, let's say. I still, quite, you know, I still get on well with Jesus and... Um, you know, I like it that he's born, I see that the child of light being born at that point. But what you're looking for is that tingling sensation, which if you get it, you get it. You know, some people just get it, they're just like, oh, it's winter. You know, for whatever reason, the winter's coming, I'm gonna wear my warm gloves, it's very hygge, that sense of hygge-ness. But it's hygge with um, tinsel, let's say, with like the um, fingertips are excited, the smell of cinnamon, the making of the, you know, the, when we get the oranges and we put the cloves inside and you put it in the airing cupboard and then it smells delicious for the rest of the year. It's those things and it's showing us how we are the custodians of the Feyu energy of life and joy and gold and pleasure and desire through the winter months. So it's just asking you to recognize yourself and to honor yourself as a custodian and to say, what can I do through this week to be a custodian for Feyu energy through the, the winter months, through this time of Issa? Esther, you've got Perthro. We're getting a lot of the really flowing runes coming through. Um, I, yes, thank you, Chan. I hope I feel better soon as well. I'm already feeling so much better. It's just that the voice is sounding a bit blah, isn't it? But um, I did lots of rest over the weekend. I did not do any of the things that I had planned to do in terms of getting myself ready for this week. Nope. Just enjoyed myself and did lots of sleeping and house half tending. And, and it was lovely. Let me see if I can find the Perthro rune so I can show everybody the Perthro rune. As I always say when we have the um, when we get the Perthro rune up, it's the one that looks the least like its um, English alphabet equivalent. Perthro, P doesn't look like a P, does it? But it is, and it is the rune of um, of weird, of laughter, of the flow of fate, of that sense of. Um, there is a, a, a sense of surrender, but in many ways it's surrender to ourselves, surrender to our own wisdom, surrender to our own desires. So as you're feeling into that, that need to um, rest or into what does the new moon in North is offer me, it is really surrendering to your own understandings, your own wisdom. What does my body tell me right now? 
what do I really want right now? Without any of that second guessing about what anybody else might think on this topic. That's what I'm getting from Perthro for you this week, um, Trisha. It's uh, Perthro is your gift and saying, if it's only for a week, for this week, surrender to yourself. Surrender to your desires and your instincts and your knowings, Patricia, and follow them whenever you can for the course of this week. Suzanne, you have got Gibo. So oh, it's quite nice, actually, a little mediator between Perthro and Issa. I like it because Gibo has a flow within it. It's like a water wheel turning. It is gift giving and oath making. And it almost um, is the consequence of that Perthro energy. If we imagine, you know, we've been, at, we've been at Ragnarok, we've been at the end of like time as we know it, although we know that the universe will rebirth in some form or another, the all will rebirth. We've been out there, let's go back to the beginning. Let's imagine you, you to imagine like day one, nothing has been committed to. No, no promises, uh, no relationships, no structures, no systems, you know, nothing. Just, maybe, the first breath. The first in-breath. And the Gibo rune is born in that moment. The consequence of the first in-breath is, of course, the first out-breath. And that creates you know, the first cycle. I'm sure somebody who's more scientifically minded will give me a cycle even before respiration. But it is that idea that there was an in the beginning and then something happened. And because of that something happening, a consequence was created. And the Giva rune embodies that. And it says, it offers us this really, what's the word I'm looking for? It's both a very light rune, it offers a very light energy. For those of you who ever sat with a, I have a big rose quartz stone, it's a really big stone, I put it on my heart centre. And I either sit with it or I lie, big cross position on my bed with this um, rose quartz offering healing that feels incredibly gibo. And there is that, um, the breath is a very important way of connecting with the gibo rune, with the in-breath and the out-breath. But it also has a weight to it. Here's the gibo rune there. It has a weight to it. It does speak of consequences. Incredibly important rune for recognising the contracts, uh, social contracts for recognising uh, laws, and those could be natural laws, physical laws, societal laws. That 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 is how we keep going with the with the Gibo rune. Hmm. trying to feel into what it is that the Gibberin is specifically offering to you, Suzanne, because it's given me lots of, um, go back to the beginning and imagine that first point, the point at which the Gibo rune was born, you know, and the way in which once that wheel started turning, it was going to carry on turning. You can see it here, a little bit like a water wheel or a windmill, but it keeps on turning and it keeps on turning and the you know, whatever is then going to be created, it can be milled. I think there is actually just a sense of, perhaps there's a review process here for you, Suzanne, just looking at um, the pre, looking at the year that's gone as part of the, the, the rebirthing of the, of the coming year. And doing that piece of saying, okay, so what were the Gibo moments, the moments where this happened and then it became inevitable that this happened, that that, that was already set into motion. Either things that you were like then, okay, I was doing my best to resist the current, but I couldn't, it had to turn, it had to be in this way and almost offering that weight to the Gibo rune and saying, I, you've got this, you, know, you, you are there. And that, in, that the, and that the Gibo rune is many, many of these wheels all working together. So there might be some things which are, you know, inevitable consequences that are inevitable, you know, societal, biological, um, natural, but they're also, they're working together all of the time. And so 
in any situation, there is more than one Gibo rune operating at any one time. And I think this is why it wants to offer itself to you. It's saying, you know, go deeper, go deeper than that even still to the um, emotions that were felt during that time or to, um, I gave myself more opportunity to rest and replenish at that time. And what does that mean moving forward for my energy cycles? So it's, um, yeah, it's having a play with the way in which Gibo has operated for you through the course of the previous year. And when you need to, anything that you feel as if you know, I've been holding on to this is somehow my responsibility, you can offer that to the Gibo runes because they're all still going. You know, they're, they're all in interplay with each other. And anything you feel like, actually, I haven't received fully what was available to me in that moment allowing the Gibo runes to give that to you. So it's a process of releasing and filling. Um, very nice um, work with the moon as well. We'll probably work really nicely with that. I'm not feeling that, uh, maybe for you with the, with the new moon, it's a sense in which you've done a lot of the obvious work on the surface. So the north is might not be as obviously present, saying, oh, you need to tend to this and you need to tend to that. But underneath that is the Gibo rune still operating still turning so i'm feeling as if that would actually the gibo rune could be a really nice rune to work with through the whole coming lunar cycle oh, oh, let me see then we have ren you have perthro so perthro we've done that with patricia is there anything else that's coming from the perthro rune for you mm, no the word surrender is coming through again really really strongly there for you ren it is that surrendering to yourself I want maybe just a little bit of looking into the the week as it um, as it unfolds for you and recognizing where opportunity might be coming up and is there any way in which you could surrender to that more fully or surrender to support that's offered more fully so perhaps just a little bit not just of going what is it that I want um, which is what I was looking at with Patricia, but also looking at where is the universe offering me things that perhaps I'm less comfortable with accepting. You know? That moment when somebody says, yeah, I can help you with the washing up and that bit in, in your head goes, but they can't possibly do that because um, you know, it's my washing up and I would feel really guilty. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. No, no, that's just saying, oh yes, that would be great, thank you. Looking for those moments where the universe might be saying, actually, some support's available to you. What would happen if you surrendered to it rather than feeling like, oh, no, that I can't. No, what if you could? So maybe just a little bit of expanding into that Perthro energy outside of yourself as well there, Ren. Hannah, you've got Lagos. Oh, your Lagos is upside down. You're going to be doing some deep sea diving, Hannah, is what I feel. I was talking to, who was it with that I was doing Lagos with? That's really naughty of me, isn't it? I've forgotten myself, my first Lagos person. Chen, was it you? No, that was Northers. Oh, I've forgotten, that's terrible of me. Hmm. It will come, but it doesn't matter. We've talked about, we've talked about Lagos. Um, but what I'm feeling here with the Lagos rune is, is that sense of going down into dream, in, into spaces of meditation, into spaces, uh, into natural spaces as well. And taking on the role of, you also about all at the beginning and how he's like the hunter. I feel as if for you, you're like the fisherman, um, this, and it's literally like with the little hook that you're sending your, your hook down and you're looking for, for treasure. Ancestral treasure comes to mind as well. It's not just fish, it's um, ancient treasures that have been deep beneath the waters for a long period of time that are being offered to you as a, as a custodian, like perhaps for, for healing work. So I'm actually seeing for you, Hannah, I'm, I know that you'd be up for something like this. It's that going, perhaps even going to the Well of Weird or to a a, a well that you could say is some, like your ancestral, like an ancestral well. You could almost choose a, a line of your family there and say, I'd like to go to the well for this place and, and go there and get your your line and your hook, send it down and see what comes back up and, and see what... Um, 
offers itself to you and it might be that there are things that need um, your attention and your healing that they need to be properly released that they've been you know lying in the waters waiting or there might be gifts for you as well there might be some some things to do so that came through quite strongly there um, it's a hook your Largo's rune is a hook going down into the waters to find treasures that need your attention Candice, your rune is Taywa's reversed. It's interesting that we've had Largo's reversed and now we've got Taywa's reversed. Let me see if I can find them both. So this is the Largo's rune for people there. That's the Largo's rune. And that was it uh, as its hook self. And here's the Taywa's rune. So this is it the right way up and this is it the other way up. Um, pointing directly downwards. And... Um, For you, Candice, with your Tewaz rune, I feel as if it's being offered to you, uh, perhaps by Tia, or its patron, and it's almost like, you know, when we send, um, scientists go and they send like a probe down in this, down into the ice, and then they bring up this long column of ice and it um, shows they can they can read so much from they can see what was in the atmosphere at any given time it's this compacted ice that has been there for like eon upon eon upon eon and they bring it up and they say oh you know this is when um that volcano struck because there's ash here and this is what was hanging about in the air there and they can read the past based on this little tube of ice that they've drilled for and i'm seeing tewas your tewas ring as being like a little drill that wants to go down into the past and my suggestion is um it might be that you are feeling a desire to move into healing into a new space for for healing and exploration and trying something trying new things and it's almost saying that this Tewa's rune is being gifted to you as the first very gentle exploration of those spaces it's almost like you know before we before we crack the ice which you know the Issa rune doesn't like it to be cracked in that sense it needs that gentleness that the Tewa's rune is offering itself as a little bore to just go down and sense what's possible um and again it looks to me as if it's like through the coming year for you so it might be a question of starting to bring to mind the things that you would like to um, achieve or explore into or what would you like to shed or release through the coming year where would you like to be as an exploration so you're doing your exploration with your Tewa's rune and then have a look at where might the support be the, the the gentle careful nurturing supportive supportive support mm. Um, that will help you to do that um, safely and in a way that honours the the role of the Issa rune in, in protecting us, in insulating us, in caring for us, in allowing that um, that stillness when the world can be too busy and too hectic. So I feel as if Tewaz is saying, you know, let me be that um, that probe that goes ahead. So what is it that you're, what is it that's calling? do some work identifying that, naming it, and then what support could you get to, to move through that? So I hope that's helpful for you, Candice. Hello, Karen. You pulled through as reverse today. I'm really feeling the dream space calling quite strongly. We've had that with um, quite a few people now, actually. You know, the inner gaze, looking inside, doing some journeying work, some meditation, working with dream. And I'm feeling this with a thurus as rune. Um, it's reminding me of uh, one of the stories, that the story that I share in Thurus as um, Awakening in the Awakening module is all about, it's an alternative version of the story of Sleeping Beauty. The idea of the thorn as being the protective hedge that um, that the witch puts up around the space to protect and that our subconscious mind puts up to protect and that what we often do is we turn 
our thorns inwards in order to guard against the parts of ourselves that we believe for whatever reason that society will not um, honour within us that is but like oh no don't bring that part of you and I feel as if the Thurus Azrun is calling you a little bit here and saying let's bring some attention to this what parts of you aren't given free access to the outside world you know the wild woman the angry child the playful and we were talking about the we were well, actually at the very beginning I talked about the huntress and the and the warrior and and maybe your warrior wants to come out you know so what parts of you want to come out and we then start to look at that interaction between the thurisas rune that is the controller part of ourselves the sort of grown up you no know, um conditioned part of ourselves which is saying stay down no and those parts of ourselves that are pushing upwards and saying we want to come out yes and that's when we get a real tension of Thurisa's energy inside us. And so then what we're starting to do is look for ways, safe ways, in which we can start to allow these two parts of ourselves to converse. And it's not a case of any time that we're trying to repress one side of ourselves, the Thurisa's rune is coming out in its um, negative aspect. So if the, if you're... You know, angry child is to come out and go Rah! at the controller, the sort of parent self, that's still a destructive relationship. So what we're looking at is how can we start to bring them into constructive relationship and start to dialogue with each other. Um, so Karen, you might already have um, ways in which you can do that. If you don't, please do get in touch. You can email talk at and we can talk about that. But it's just the first step is bringing presence to that to sort of saying well do am i controlling some aspects of myself am i not allowing them to come out most fully and, and maybe naming them or working again i talked about journaling for the lagus rune you can use that with the thurisas rune and yeah for the same for the same purposes you can do a bit of journaling in the morning is very helpful to do that at that time or, or before bed and just sort of say yeah if no one was here and I could do anything that I wanted to do. What would I do right now? So just bringing some presence to those wilder sides and the, the parts of you that you're like, no, I just won't bring that bit out here. Not in polite company. And, and, and then you can start to work on how can, I, how can I bring more partnership relationship to those different parts of me into the world. Diane, you have Bacano on its side pointing face upwards. Um, I am well, Diane. Like I say, my voice is a bit funny, but I'm getting better. I'm giving myself lots of chance to replenish and recoup, and I'll be having some more honey and lemon after this. So here we have the Bacana in, so normally it's on, uh, that way. It's lying this way up for you, Diane. Ah. <sighs> I'm actually seeing this as um, like a journey of rebirthing is what I'm sensing. So the Bacano rune brings rebirth, growth, new life, you know, all of those things. It's very protective. Um, goddess energy often comes within it, this sort of growth and a newness. It has some um, that, it's almost like Bacano is powerful because when nature comes and she covers the whole, you know, the world in green, each individual shoot might be quite delicate, but you could never take them all on. You know, there's just too much of her. No, so it's power in numbers is the Bacano rune self-defense mechanism. But when I see her this way, for you, I'm seeing this as being two mountains. It's like a mountain pass. And it's this, um, oh, there we go, this space in the middle which is calling me. It's saying, yeah, there's a journey which can feel like um, darkness. It reminds me of when I went to Iceland. Oh, I've gone funny in colour then. When I went to Iceland and I did the, there's a walk that you can do between the continental plates, the um, American and European continental plates, and it's sort of that awe of feeling like, yeah, there's one continental plate on one side of me and one on the other, and I'm walking through the middle, and it is spectacular and beautiful, but also a bit, um, it makes you feel small in some way, and it's that sense of walking through this space here. And I think what the Bacano rune is saying is that, yes, you are walking through this space here, but 
there is this dawn, this dawning light. Why my screen is going like weirdly orange as I'm talking about the dawning light, I don't know. I don't know if that's, um, you can see that as well or if that's just me. But it's this, the, the, the light of, of the dawn that is drawing you on and it's saying focus on that. Focus on that rebirthing light to travel between these two great mountains. You know, and the Bacano rune is, is there with you as you do that. Candice is saying, I absolutely loved having my birth rune report, um, report done. Yes, you know what? I love doing people's birth rune report does. And I love talking to them about it. It's such a journey of them. Um, I find it so exciting like, every time to, you know, I feel so blessed to be able to offer this into the world. Um, I build on Nigel Pennick's work for those people who, who, who don't know. So he did a lovely book. Um, Runic Astrology, Timekeeping and Starcraft in the Northern Tradition, I want to say that it's called. It's got quite a long title, but Runic Astrology you can look up. And I build on his work and oh, I love it so much. So yes, anyone wants me to do their birth rune reports, here I am. Please send in your orders, I would love to. Lisa, you have Tewas today. So we have done Tewas, but we did Tewas reverse, didn't we? So let's look at Tewas the right way up this time. I'm feeling that real poise and authority, let's say, of Tia, who the basis of his authority is truth. He might not have a throne anymore. He might not have a right arm anymore. But he always follows his truth. This is why when he was told that you know, his beloved companion um, Fenris was, was dangerous and would need to be tethered and that, and Fenris said, you know, one of you will put your one of you will do this and he says I will I will do this and he takes the consequences of that as well he does that because if he didn't he would be less honorable in his own eyes he's like this is the truth and much as I want to deny it and much as I want my friend to think that I was ignorant of these things and that it was done without my knowledge and my consent if I pretend that I am not party to this decision, I lose my ability to stand in truth and I lose my power. And for, for you, Lisa, I feel as if Tia wanted to share those words with you directly to honor the truth in you and to say, as long as you are standing in that truth, you have all the power you need. So I will. Leave that with you, Lisa. Elaine says, morning, I have anything reversed. Anything reversed, Elaine? I'm not sure what to do with that one. Hmm. I'm going to leave that one with you, Elaine. Come back to me if you have a rune. Because I cannot see a rune within that. Unless there's a, a typo and it's done um, anything for you and it's a different rune. But I'm not sure I can interpret which one it is, I'm afraid, my darling. Sally Ann, you have Ansu's, so Odin's rune, or one of his runes, I always think about it as being his, it's the, um, the root of the word, um, it has os within it, which means opening, mouth, estuary, it means God, it also um, stems off into a whole different direction, it has order and structure and the oak tree within it as well, so just as um, Tia was speaking through Tewas, Odin always feels to me as if he speaks through the Ansu's rune. So it's the, almost a partner with the Fey rune, Fey, Freya's rune at the very beginning of the Futhark, which we were talking about with Erica. We had the Fey rune here. So I feel as if Ansu's is offering itself as a counterpoint to that. So here's the Ansu's rune. You can see that Fey points up, Ansu's points down. And when you bring them together as a bind rune, you actually put their forms together. and They become like a double Wunya rune if you carry on if you were to carry on their points, do, 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 they would um, they would join here and become a double Winyo rune, which for me is my um, bind rune for magic. And I think Ansees is talking about the gift of story in the same way that um, Freya was offering this wisdom about Feyu 
and talking about being the steward of the energy of Feu. And Suze is offering itself and saying, this is also a time for story sharing. There is less doing and there is more story sharing, which can be about entertainment. It can be about um, healing. It can be about sharing wisdom. It can be about supporting insight and enlightenment. It's one of the reasons why I'm doing my winter nights ceremonies, um, which and I've already shared here and I will share again for anybody who wants to come and hasn't yet um, got your tickets. That sense in which story needs a space to be received and this is the space. And it's for me, Sally, and it's offering to you that sense of the pleasure of story rather than the meaning of story. It's saying sometimes we listen to stories in order to learn or grow. And sometimes we listen in order to be lost or transported or transformed into something else. It's that um, blissful story and that ecstatic story. So I think and what Anzius is saying is maybe go and have a look at um, the books that you love to read for pleasure. And if you haven't, make a little stack of them by your bed for these winter nights, the ones that give you joy. Um, play with them. Find those stories and give them space through these coming um, winter nights as our Isarun then gives way into Yera, gives way into Iwaz through the coming mm. couple of months. Uh, yeah, finding those stories that nurture your soul. Carol, you've got, it says Lagardia upright, please. Now, again, I'm wondering whether you mean Lagus, um, the rune of water, which I have covered, I believe, twice now. So we had the the water as a gateway that interplay with um, ice and water. And we also had um, Hannah, where we were talking about the hook. So I'm going to leave you with those things. I'm going to work on the assumption that you meant Lagus. So have a listen to what we've already shared for Lagus. Sally Ann says, holidays. Oh, are you going on holiday? Lovely. I hope so. Um, Candy says, yogi throat tea is really good. I recommend it. Thank you, Candice. Yes, I am open to as many different recommendations for different types of tea as possible. Michelle says, thank you. Finding it hard to sit still and be in the moment and get out of the constantly doing mode. We'll read the Issa room. Yeah, see if that will um, help you. Marie, you have got Bacano. So we had Bacano for Diane, but you have got it the right way up. So this is really interesting. When I, whenever Bacano comes up at this time, because it's the rune of springtime and we are obviously in, in winter, other aspects of Bacano bring themselves to the fore at this point. And I'm going to feel a little bit into the, the goddess energies. So before I, well, I said not said before, because I've done Northern, the Northern tradition my, my whole life, but I spent a lot of time working within um, Wiccan circles and we did a lot of Celtic work. I would often think about the different faces of the divine feminine, and you could think about it as Bacano does offer access to all of the different faces of the divine feminine from the the maiden and the mother but also the crone phase and we have this um you know isa offers the crone phase to us but what the northern tradition does for me is it offers more of a multiplicity we we do get three with things like the fates, Urd, Fadandi and Skull. So we do have three as a powerful, um, potent number, but that's also found within the gods. So Odin is often a triple god, Odin, Vili and Ve. So that's not a necessarily just a feminine quality, it's a divine quality, this ability to become um, the many. So what I'm feeling into is the Desir, the collective of the divine feminine and the Bacano rune offering that through and that sense of imagining those, the, the nights when mothers and daughters and grandmothers all come together in sacred space. And it's almost an inviting in for you of all of those aspects of self, as well as perhaps working with your Desir circle too, but it's inviting in, you know, the child that you were um, the, the mother state, when you've embodied that mother state, um, the wise woman, 
and inviting all of those parts of you into your space. Um, and I would actually think about um, planning some form of ceremony for yourself along those lines. Um, maybe as we come more into December, it'd be a really nice and beautiful piece to do. And inviting your Disney circle to witness that and perhaps to offer to you any parts of your sacred self that have not been recognised or that you haven't... Oh, what's the word? That, are, that are not fully accessible to you at this time is what I'm getting with the Bacano rune for you. Chen says, thank you. Erica says, I love being a custodian of Feiyu energy through the Easter winter season. I'm glad that you do. Patricia says, thank you. So does Esther. Maggie says, bonjour from Paris. Bonjour, Maggie. Kina is what you have, the creative, um, the creative rune. Ooh, the fire in the darkness coming through. I can feel that burning, like this sort of burning, not an uncomfortable burning, just to be clear, a nice burning creative sensation in the <sighs> it's just beneath my solar plexus actually it's not quite in the solar plexus it's just beneath in that sort of space between the cauldron of ideas and the the will <sighs> what is it offering there is a there's a gift that is being offered and i feel as if perhaps yeah, I think that what it's saying is there are things to be birthed through the coming year for you. Big creative projects um, that are available. And this key Nazarene is offering itself almost like a little mini um, spell. So there is a, what I would suggest is undertaking some form of creative act, uh, something that you make. It could be anything. It doesn't matter what it, what it is. It could be, you know, you can make a cake. You can make a ring, you can make a painting, you know, whatever it is, but it should be made with the hands to represent and invite in the gifts of creativity and the gifts of Kinaz, because Kinaz is a rune of manifestation. So it offers um, awareness and insight, like the torch being held up in the darkness. It offers creativity as you begin to express and it offers manifestation as well and transformation so and you want all three of those things is what I'm feeling and so it's almost saying through this time the act of creating something of um, envisioning something that you want to make creating it and then using it in some way so if it's a cake eat the cake if it's a ring wear the ring if it's a picture put it up on the wall and look at it so that you are enacting what you want to sow as a seed for the coming year of the way in which you want to be able to see I want to move from thought into action into manifestation and it might be that you already have some ideas about what that's going to look like for yourself through the coming year in which case you can um, offer those to this creative spell or it might be that you don't know yet in which case you're just saying I'm just opening to the the power of Kinaz for the for the coming year so that was quite fun my year was a um unexpected little practical spell for you there elaine that should have read north is not anything oh uh, i see um yes i was just like i can't um, interpret what it's going to be and it's reversed for you interesting hmm so with our north is new moon and the isa rune i'll just have a little look at the upside down what's coming to me there for you oh okay so I, I feel almost as if there is a sense of a lack of control, a things happening either too fast or there's almost like a slipperiness that's coming. It's almost like, you know, the way in which um, when the heat touches ice and then the ice becomes, it melts on the top and it becomes slippery. And I'm seeing the north is rune. I can make it go upside down for you. Which are almost like a slope. And you're trying to say, no, and you're sort of trying to put a like a ski pole or something there to stop this swift movement from overtaking you. And I think that what the North Israel is saying is um, that is, it's a circumstance at this moment in time, this sense of events being outside of your control and that that can feel uncomfortable. I'm not getting like the Pertha rune coming and saying surrender to the moment or the Bacana rune coming and saying I will be a buffer and I will cushion you in some way or other. I think the North East rune is almost offering itself in, a little bit in sympathy at this point. Um, 
and saying, yeah, that can be really, really tough when you feel as if there are things happening, like that life is happening too fast around you and you are, you are trying to cling on. <sighs> what I'm seeing is that the North is really offering itself to, to you in this, in this moment. So I would suggest actually lighting a need fire for yourself. So again, we've had a little bit of practical magic, so I'm going to offer this to you as well, Elaine. So if you have a fire, you can light a fire. If you have a candle, you can light a candle. A black candle can be particularly powerful for, for Northers, but it's not necessary. It just adds it in. You can trace the Northers rune over it. Offer all of the things that feel outside of your control, that feel really difficult to the flames offer them to the flames give yourself that stillness moment that we were talking about right at the very beginning with Issa and just allow yourself to be with that fire because if you think about that when the times of our ancestors when the winter was setting in and they didn't know if the sun was going to rebirth and they were lighting the fire as an act of faith and that is what the North is doing, is offering for you at this moment. It's that chance to be in that point of stillness. And every time something comes up and you feel like this doesn't feel like it's in my control, this doesn't feel like it's in my control, this doesn't feel like it's in my control, offer that to the fire for as, as many times as you need to, as many times as you need to, and allow the fire to take it even if it's just for those few moments because sometimes things do feel as if they're outside of our control and they do feel a bit scary or slippery or as if you know it's and the uh effort of holding on can be really really hard so Norfis is saying come and give it to me give those things to me and my flame will be the light that draws the solutions towards you moving forward okay candy says that makes perfect sense right now i've always loved seeing those ice time capsules being retrieved she'll have to book a one-to-one -one soon oh i would love that please do yes um yes that's all i have to say please do book a one-to-one -one. um michelle i just realized i'm awake during the live i have perth rose so i'll have to go back and watch um yes go back and watch with your perth rune there michelle diane says I'm loving the idea of putting them first in my diary. Oh, no, sorry, that's um, Sally Ann. Diane says, I love the thought of rebirth. It sounds cleansing. Yes, I think so too. And Sally Ann says, I love the idea of putting them in my first in my diary. Yeah, it's really powerful. It's really powerful. Now I understand with the holidays, of course, that's what you were saying. It is a really powerful way to work. Karen says, thank you so much. You're right. The inner angry child started to make itself felt. It feels like trying to hold a balloon under the water. Yeah, that's really tough, isn't it? I'm just here holding my inner child balloon under the water and it's fine. And so it's a bit like, where can I find that space for the inner child to sometimes have some space? Because she's got a lot to offer. No, she's got a lot to offer. Um, wonderful. Okay, that is everybody. It has been so lovely to see you all. Um, yes, it's been a longish session, but they're getting long now, which is wonderful because so many people are coming. So thank you to everybody who comes for the whole session. You know, I put my, I take my hat off to you and thank you all thank you all who are here who are joining me for the recording just a little reminder so you've got um soon as star wheel you've got the birth runes oracle or if you've got birth rune soul journey if you are interested in any of those now between now and you know first of january is such a perfect time to be starting so go and have a look on the web pages or just drop me a line on talk at maganrose.com and I do have a few one-to-one -one sessions left before the end of the year. So if you are thinking about booking a one-to-one, -one, do it sooner rather than later. If you would like to get it in for 2022, lovely to see you all. Take care of yourselves. I will see you all very soon.